suspense, danger, intrigue, mystery, and maybe even a little blood. Yes, once again, it's time for Thriller Thursday with thriller writer Larry D. Thompson. Hey there, thriller readers, thriller writers, thrilleristas, and thrillerati. This is Thriller Thursday, the show that covers up and coming authors, new books, and events in the world of the thriller. I'm Dave Dufour, and with me, as always, is the man responsible for the novel So Help Me God, The Trial, and most recently, Dead Peasants, thriller writer Larry D. Thompson. Hi, Larry. How are you this week? Uh, good morning, Dave. I am doing fantastic. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Houston. We had a cool front come in last night, so we're finally going to get some fall weather. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, you, 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 we had the same cool front, which means that it's colder here than it is there, but it was beautiful here for the, for at least for the duration. And, uh, so great, great, good. I love the fall weather. Um, we have a really special guest with us today, uh, Jock Miller, who is the, uh, who has been a, a writer for a number of years, but is uh, his latest novel, which is called uh, Fossil River, has is just coming out or has just come out. Uh, this is, uh, uh, well, I'd just like to welcome you, Jack. How are you? Thank you, Dave. I'm, I'm great. Like Larry, this is a, this is a very exciting uh, career writing. And uh, just the enthusiasm and spirit that you get from writing a book and then the, re- the rewards of seeing uh, co- and getting comments from readers has been an exhilarating experience for me personally. Yeah, the the the, the feedback is 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 um, well, I wouldn't say it's half the fun, but it's a lot of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, I the you know the first time, uh, and this is my first published novel, but the first time I entered a room with uh, a number of people that had read the book, uh, it was like a coming out party. I, I was so excited uh, to ha- to hear their comments. And endorsements, um, and it, it was just a real up uh, for me personally. That's great. Well, to give you an example, uh, Dave, of how exciting this is when, when, when you write something and somebody really enjoys it. I, I was at a book signing yesterday, and one lady had already purchased my book and finished it, and she came up to me and she said, "I bought your book, and I sat down at six o'clock in the evening," and she says, "I stayed up until three o'clock in the morning." To finish your book because I couldn't put it down. That's right. Um, that that uh, that that makes you feel really great. Right, and and you yeah. know, and, and that's that's not a common thing. I mean, you, I, you you say that you know, there's a lot of books are page turners, but I think you know, there's a there's a real difference in a book that grabs you and really speaks to you and makes you do that all night or just because you can't put it down. I had right. the same comment last night uh, from so- someone who read it uh, and said, "You owe me." five hours of sleep because I didn't get <laughs> to bed until 2, 2 a.m. Uh, and, you know, that's the kind of thing you love to hear as a writer. That's great. i I, I got to ask you, Jock, uh, I'm fascinated by your subject matter. It combines so many interesting uh, 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 issues. But let's uh, start maybe by asking you to tell us a little bit about uh, the novel itself and what gave you the idea for Fossil River. Uh, yes, Larry. I, I have always been driven by uh, the commercial potential of products. Um, I was a former sales manager at Procter & Gamble, so I owe P&G a lot of my training and uh, insight into marketing. And, and so uh, when I had the first experience of writing a novel back in 1977, um, I, I just sat down one afternoon and for 90 days straight uh, pumped out a 300-page uh, novel that almost got sold. And I had David Brown of Brown Zanuck uh, that did uh, Jaws, the movie Jaws, uh, was very interested in having first option on the movie rights. So this was a, a wonderful launch that I had. The book never got published, uh, but I'm that's my second novel now that I'm working on uh, getting that first novel that I wrote back in 77. Uh, back on stream. Uh, but but the, the Fossil River, the concept was, what if the United States uh, entered into a, an energy crisis of colossal proportion and uh, could not get any more oil uh, from the uh, Arab oil, uh, you know, the, the cartel over there? Uh, and so I, I came up with the idea is, 
let's assume that the United States is on the threshold of running out of oil um, and the strategic oil supply is uh, running on empty. And all of a sudden, the entire uh, mobility uh, is threatened. Cars, trains, buses, um, and the entire military, which, which consumes three quarters of the, uh, of the uh, fossil fuel supply to keep our nation safe. What happens if all of that goes dry? And then I came up with the thought of, uh, let's say that the President of the United States comes up with a plan in order to save the nation from going uh, black uh, to run out of oil, c come up with a plan to try to find an oil supply. And um, they develop new technology that can see underground 20 miles, and they, uh, they scour the West uh, in a search for fossil fuel, and they find the mother load of oil in Noatak National Preserve in Alaska, northwestern Alaska. Problem is that it is totally inaccessible to get to, um, but uh, they, they, they send in an energy team, and uh, when the, the team goes in to uh, try to discover the, uh, the depth and, and size of this other load, nobody gets out alive. And they, they find uh, that protecting the oil, uh, the territory there, is a living fossil uh, a colony of raptors that have survived uh, since the Jurassic Cretaceous period. And uh, of course, paleontology is, I have a lust for paleontology. I was a zoology major uh, and a pre-med major, uh, and paleontology was my favorite subject. So it all tied in with the excitement of researching this. It took five years to write it. And uh, so question is, how can we get the oil out of there uh, in time to save the nation? And uh, so the U.S. Marines get involved, and uh, they lose a lot of Marines trying to get in there and have access to the oil. And the question is, will they get the oil out in time to save the nation? And that's the concept for the book. So it so sounds like the the energy crisis meets Jurassic Park. Exactly. <laughs> Except that, uh, but living fossils, Larry, are, are the four, there are 500 living fossils today uh, that, are, that are from the Jurassic Cretaceous period um, that are alive today and have managed to thrive uh, over hundreds of millions of years. And uh, so the idea you, you, of a living fossil. Can you educate fossil, us for a minute? What, uh, when you say living fossils, tell, tell us what you mean. Give us an example. The definition of living fossil is, is an animal uh, or plant that has succeeded in staying alive uh, since the Jurassic or Cretaceous period, all of these years up to current time. The oldest living fossil alive today is the coelacanth found 400, year, 400 million years ago, and uh, that is still alive today. So uh, there are a lot of living fossils like uh, uh, horseshoe crabs uh, and that kind of thing uh, that have managed to, uh, to survive over the years. And so we have a uh, living fossil predator colony uh, that has, uh, because of it being so hidden uh, in this uh, 6,000 square mile uh, preserve in Alaska. No one has has been able to get in there and find it uh, until this happens. I'm familiar with Alaska. So in fact, uh, my wife and I spent two weeks up there this summer. And I, I know generally the area you're talking about. Obviously, we didn't get there. But that's certainly uh, an isolated uh, area. Uh, I'm sure mankind has rarely been there. And I guess if you want to uh, create an area where you can find uh, a, a uh, uh, raptors that had been living all this time and nobody saw them, that's, that's as good a place as any to create the story. Well, yeah, and it was a lot of fun to do that, Larry. Uh, and, and for me personally, uh, the, 
Uh, the main character in the novel is a, uh, a wounded warrior from Iraq with a prosthetic left arm uh, shot off during his mission over there. And I, one of the magazines we publish in our publishing company is called Careers in the Disabled magazine uh, for, uh, for wounded warriors and people with disabilities. So I wanted to tie in that experience and passion that I have to help wounded warriors get jobs with this novel. So I, I've got the... Uh, uh, the the main character is a wounded warrior. And that, was, a that would be that, that, that a marine would be, helicopter pilot. That would be Scott Chandler. Then you're talking about. That's exactly right. And he's he's manager of this wildlife park. Yeah, he right. He manages the wildlife, uh, and he was a zoology major, <laughs> and had all of the background. And uh, he flew a helicopter over in Iraq and got uh, shot down a number of times. He's got. Uh, you know, now, how does how does arts. Kimberly how does Kimberly Fulton, the uh, curator of paleontology at the New York Museum of Natural History, in your book, how does she enter the uh, story? She uh, enters the story because uh, Scott Chandler had had uh, uh, when he saw got glimpses of what was protecting the territory in there. He had no idea what it was because it was it was fast, it was big, it was like no other. Um, animal in, in his uh, park. And so he had gone to school uh, with Kimberly uh, way back when, and they were both uh, uh, into paleontology um, uh, and zoology, all the, the biosciences. And, and so uh, he thought of her uh, because she became um, uh, a curator and was really had published a number of books on the subject of uh, you know uh, predators and and uh, and uh, dinosaurs, that kind of thing, and of course he she was the curator for uh, one of the curators for the Museum of Natural History, and so uh, he called her and he sent her uh, samples of uh, one of the uh, predators that had attacked his helicopter when he made a landing, and she opened it up, ran tests on it, and was stunned. Uh, to find that this uh, appeared to be a living fossil. So she flew out there uh, with her son, uh, and I'm not going to tell you the whole thing about what happens, but, but no. her son and his girlfriend uh, uh, joined them out there, and, and through the story, they get lost in the park, and it's, it's a survival uh, trying to find them uh, before it's too late. But... Uh, in any case, Kimberly goes in there, Dr. Uh, Fulton goes in there to, to try to identify what's in there. And she's just floored to find out that it is um, a, a living uh, raptor dinosaur. I've, I've actually, I looked on uh, Amazon uh, and looked at the reviews for your book, and it looks like uh, you've gotten very strong reviews from uh, readers so far. Uh, a lot of people have talked about this and actually compared it to Jurassic Park, which uh, considering that was one of Michael Crichton's hugely successful novels, that's a real compliment. Well, yeah, I was thrilled uh, about that, uh, Larry. And, and uh, one of the most exciting uh, uh, reviews that I got was from uh, the, the uh, leading head uh, paleontologist curator of the, of the entire uh, dinosaur collection at the, you know, at the Museum of Natural History. Uh, and, and he, uh, Mark Morell, um, is, uh, you know, he's chairman and curator of the Division of Paleontology. He wrote a wonderful review of the novel, and I was just floored at his response. So it added a lot of credibility. Let me ask you a couple of, uh, in looking at your biography, there are a couple of interesting things that jump out at me. Uh, one of them is uh, I see that you actually play bagpipes, and I don't know that I've ever met or talked to somebody who played backpipe, so I'd like to know how uh, that interest developed. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. It's a wonderful passion of mine. I, d I just have a, a lot of eclectic interests, um, and uh, the first, the first uh, chapter starts off with a fly fisherman. Well, fly fishing is my absolute, uh, I'm like a diseased fly fisherman. I love fly fishing, but <laughs> I, I was over in Scotland a number of times with my wife, Kay, and uh, I always used to see the uh, 
the the lone pipers come out of the castles and play the pipes and my my on my mother's side my great grandfather uh, George Dunlap from Ayrshire uh, is my Scottish connection and uh, delighted to hear that your middle name is Duncan which is just as Scottish as you can get and so I I came back and I I made a pact with myself uh, since I play the piano by ear I memorized 25 um, uh, Scottish songs and said to myself, when I can play 25 Scottish songs, I'm going to treat myself to the Highland bagpipes. Uh, and I did so, and uh, on my uh, 60th birthday, uh, invited our 12 grandchildren and my wife and I and our children to join us on the top of Hoosier Mountain in Breckenridge, Colorado. And uh, I played Scotland the Brave coming up uh, over the mountain with the uh, with uh, McAllen Scotch in my little, <laughs> so that was, and I thought that's all it was going to be, but uh, but then I, all of a sudden I found that people love the bagpipes, and uh, so I've done a- eighteen weddings and three funerals since then, and I play you know, for friends and at at, at parties, but just just uh, sporadically. I also see this is interesting. You're talking about your eclectic uh, interests. And that is that you've been on the board of directors of the Cold Spring Harbor Whaling Museum, which is also uh, yes. a, an interest that I'd like to hear about. Yeah, I, I, when we lived in Huntington on Long Island, where we raised our four children, um, I, my wife and I were very active in the community. Um, we believe in giving back. And so I, I was uh, uh, president of the board of the Cold Spring Harbor Whaling Museum and, uh, and also the Cold Spring Harbor Fish Hatchery. And uh, so I, uh, you know, they they knew of my my love for uh, for the sea and for and and obviously they figured with whales <laughs> uh, th- that I might be a good person to ask uh, to uh, be president of the board. And I really enjoyed that. That was a wonderful experience. Well, you're you're being I've, I've been over <laughs> Hoosier Pass many times, and my wife and I spent a lot of time in Vail this summer. So. If you're yeah, going to be yeah, up in Colorado right this summer, yeah. I would like to meet you uh, at Hoosier Pass for the for a glass of scotch. There you go, and, and a bagpipe and a bagpipe uh, there's, recital. There's nothing like a single malt, as you know, Larry. <laughs> yes, there that's true. <laughs> true. I, I will I will say I want to I want to also give credit to Ken Ken Hatchety, a uh-huh. good good and my agent, who's just an, an, a a wonderful master of the of the word. And he really I'll, I'll helped. tell you a story. I'll tell you a story about him in a minute. Go ahead. Yeah, he, he guided me along the way. And uh, and so uh, for Fossil River, it took me five years to uh, do all of the research and and get everything uh, working right. And uh, and the end product I, I'm uh, very proud of and, and very appreciative of all of the help I got along the way. Well, I can tell you about Ken. Uh, he's been my literary manager, and I've my my current novel, which came out a few weeks ago, is my third. And guidance is gui- yeah, guidance is uh, uh, is a good word. He's also a a incredibly tough taskmaster. I mean, I, my first two novels, you know, he was a comparative literature professor for many years, I, and my first two yeah. novels, I'd get copies pieces pages of my manuscript back redlined and like I was a freshman English student and <laughs> and he and he put a note on the side and said and say something like this chapter is stupid why don't you put it in here <laughs> he, he, he meant he meant no words at all well uh, all right Larry I would say that he's very consistent then because I had the same experience I he's got the patience of Joe you know right. I really uh so much appreciate the patience that he executed and and walking me through this, and you know, he'd say the same thing. You said this four four pages ago. Yeah, as a matter <laughs> of fact, I my the, my current novel, Dead Peasants. When I uh, finished the manuscript and sent it back to him, he came it came back with very few changes. And I said, Ken, I said, how come you don't have your usual uh, caustic comments about this? And he said, Well, you've been learning, Larry. He said, You're a whole lot better writer now than you were two books ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, oh, you, you yeah. knew what to avoid. Yeah. I, ca- I take it. Yes. Uh, um, what in for uh, for writers who maybe want to go down your same road? What uh, do you have any suggestions, uh, Jock? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, uh, once you get hooked, 
uh, with writing, as Larry well knows, you, you just uh, the creative process to me is just so exciting and uh, keeps me young in, in mind and thought. And and uh, but I, w- I would say never give up. Um, and I, I'm one of those guys that uh, I don't like to t- keep talking about doing something. Um, I've tried to uh, conduct my life with if I if I want to do something or accomplish something, uh, just get up and do it. Um, and my wife helps me with that. It's a fish or cut bait, she'll say. That's right. Uh, and, and so, you know, you have these wonderful ideas floating around in your head, you know, about doing it. And I, I, I just jot them down. I don't, I, I don't write novels with a, an outline. Maybe that's a fault, but I, I, once I start writing it, I just, it just pumps out, scroll, it scrolls out of me. Uh, and it just, I, I cry, I laugh, I, I, I get tense. Uh, the action scenes are, are my greatest strength, uh, uh, so I've been told. And so um, uh, Ken has worked very hard to, to get me uh, working with me on the character development because uh, I'm, a, I'm a very fast-moving kind of guy. Yeah. So, so is that, that is your process is just get going? Yeah. My, my process first is, is to come up with a with – a, with an idea for the, I, you know, for the product, I call it a product. It's, it's obviously a novel, uh-huh. but, but, but in terms of, uh, does it have any sale appeal, appeal? And I'm very market driven mm-hmm. in my concepts. Um, my ultimate dream is to, um, sit uh, in a movie theater with popcorn with Ken Atchity by my side, watching fossil river. <laughs> so, so, right. uh, you know, that the concept is, is the, is the, the product concept commercial? And uh, I've always been driven with that thought in mind. Well, the, the, book, the, book, the book industry is very much that way, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. The book, book industry um, is evolving these days, and, and uh, uh, there's, there's no telling where it's going to be five years from now. That's right. I do note that, uh, Jock, you, you went with Ken's... Uh, Story Merchant books and initially published uh, as an ebook. It appears. I uh, initially uh, back in June, Larry, we published uh, uh, Fossil River as an ebook, Amazon ebook, uh, Kindle, and uh, the reception was we had over eleven thousand people download the book, the book to read, and then uh, we. Uh, <coughs> Uh, just uh, recently in the last, I'd say three or four weeks, uh, we came out with a paperback. Well, that's, that's a really great response for a first novel. I got to tell you that for sure. And, uh, and let's let us hope that, uh, you and Ken get to watch it in the movie theater eh, in a few years anyway. That's right. Well, yeah, you know, the process, the process is long and involved and requires enormous patience. Um, and I, as, as